The third greatest ideological impact on psychiatric thinking, or that has actually created psychiatric thinking, um, is the ideology of eugenics. Now all of these ideologies, they're political ideologies, they're, they're ways of thinking and behaving and uh, uh, in regards, and they create the views that people have uh, in relation to other human beings. And this segment is uh, looking at the practice of eugenics, uh, which has had an enormous uh, sh impact in shaping the thinking of psychiatry. Um, in particular, it led to the sterilisation movement, which is um, a feature that is currently being promoted in writing in the draft mental health bill of 2011 in Western Australia, pages 135 and 136 of that bill. So that's you know, the seriousness of this problem, that the, the ideology of eugenics has shaped historically um, the sterilisation movement, and that's where that thinking comes from in, um, in uh, actually having it in a draft bill for legislation. Pulses through the skull to interrupt brain activity and shooting high voltage through surgically implanted electrodes, all to stifle problem behavior and costing up to $100,000 per patient. And while this science without a soul led to behavior modification techniques that continue to generate billions in research and treatment, it also laid the groundwork for another psychiatric movement that would cause the deaths of millions. science called eugenics, created and promoted by psychiatrists decades before the Nazis came to power. The eugenics movement got started in 1883 with Francis Galton, and he felt that human beings should take evolution in their own hands, and that the most talented individuals, the most healthy individuals, the most attractive individuals, should have more offspring. And there was great concern that people that they considered had poor genes were reproducing faster than the people they considered had good genes. They felt that a medical solution might be the proper one. This is what led to the sterilization moment. It resulted in sterilization of mentally ill people, sterilization of retarded people, sterilization of people we don't like politically and sociologically. So the problem is not with genetics. The problem is a pretend phony genetics used to justify inhumane social policies. Though never proven as anything but theory, by the early part of the 20th century, eugenics had spread to almost 30 countries, from England to Brazil, Mexico, Sweden, Russia, and most notably, the United States, where forced sterilization was widely practiced. Eugenics movement in Germany was somewhat different than the eugenics movement in the United States in that uh, there were many more physicians and psychiatrists. Alfred Plutz was one of the pioneers in the German eugenics movement and how to control the population of those who would be considered inferior. In 1905, along with uh, his brother-in-law, Ernst Rudin, he established the first uh, organization for uh, racial hygiene. Alle Nationen haben sich mit einer außergewöhnlich großen Menge an minderwertigen, schwachen, kranken und verkrüppelten abzugeben. Durch kluge Gesetze über Sterilisation würden wir auch in der Lage sein, den vernünftigsten Weg der Zeugung herbeizuführen. Hitler was particularly impressed by American Eugenicist Madison Grant. Grant's book, The Passing of the Great Race, was proclaimed by Hitler as his personal Bible. 
In his book, Mein Kampf, Hitler further hailed eugenics as the science that would rebuild the German nation. The German eugenicists welcomed the Nazi uh, advent to power because the Nazi program could fund the very programs that they had in mind. The Nazis gave them political support, financial support, and uh, conversely, the psychiatrists gave the Nazis a medical justification for uh, their uh, genocidal policies. Something like 40% of German psychiatrists had joined the SS by 1933. They weren't forced into the SS, they just joined it naturally, because the, because the beliefs were very, very similar. Rudin and his work led directly to the decision to move from sterilization to murder. Their plan was simple. First, convince the public that feeble-minded undesirables wanted to escape the burden of their existence, but could not say it, and that killing them was an act of mercy. Then extend the definition of inferior to include Jehovah's Witnesses, Jews, Gypsies, homosexuals, all unworthy of life. Psychiatrists produced propaganda movies known as the Nazi killing films, shown in all 5,300 theaters throughout Germany. Geisteskrankheit ist als ein Aktübel einer der größten Gefahren für die Volksgesundheit. Irrtum ist, dass sich solche Kranken glücklich fühlen und am Leben hängen. Sie haben überhaupt kein Daseinsbewusstsein. Wer von ihr befallen wird, dem ist die schwerste Last des Schicksals auferlegt. Ein Dasein ohne Leben. It first started with passive violence, which is starvation. It then intensified to lethal injections, and finally it developed into systematic gassing and cremation. Their headquarters were established in Berlin under the infamous code name T4. T4 program was named after Tiergarten 4, which essentially uh, resulted over a period of time in the murder of about 70,000 people who were deemed mentally retarded, emotionally distraught, or physically handicapped by the Germans. They were called life unworthy of living. The killing, piloted in psychiatric institutions across Germany, then moved into the concentration camps, with top German psychiatrists as the executioners. Paul Nietzsche, the T4 director, declared, Das Aussortier in den Konzentrationslagern wird aber genauso abgehen in der Verheilungsstein. Und mit selbigen Erfassungsbögen. Six million Jews died in uh, concentration camps and as a result of Nazi extermination policies. Rudin uh, congratulated Hitler for making his, that is Rudin's, 30-year dream come true. After the Nazi surrender, an international court of justice was held to put psychiatry on trial for its war crimes. But American psychiatrists, fearing a permanent blow to the future of psychiatry, stepped in by shifting the blame onto a handful of German psychiatrists. There were some doctors who were uh, prosecuted, uh, but very few. Ernst Rudin uh, returned to Switzerland at the end of the war. He did not uh, serve any prison time. One of the strangest things of all about the legacy of Nazi science is that some of the nastiest uh, psychiatric eugenicists at the end of the war went back to work either in Germany or sometimes in the United States. What began with a psychiatric plan to eliminate undesirable humanity had now spread throughout the civilized world and was responsible for the murder of 11 million people. Never brought to justice, psychiatrists, as you will see, continue to advance eugenics around the world. And today, we see the results in racism, human misery, and unending social conflict.
important point to make, the seriousness of this draft bill in Western Australia, the 2011 bill, is that the target uh, increase, it's worse than the current Act, the 1996 Act, in that it specifically targets a lot more children. Uh, the psychosurgery, the electric shock, and the drugging of children with chemical compounds, and uh, particularly the sterilisation of children. So it's a very serious problem that this they have they are proposing in a draft bill, and they should be arrested and prosecuted for even proposing such uh, horrific crimes against children. The other thing I wanted to mention at this point is that um, there are nurses that are in Western Australia that are testifying. In particular, one very experienced nurse has told me that in the hospitals now in Western Australia that. Um, what happens is the case manager goes and sees people that are trapped under psychiatric practice, because that's what it is, they are trapped. And then if the person doesn't want to see them, they then get the police to forcibly go into their home, remove them from their home, take them to the psych unit of a hospital, where they are drugging them to the point that they are passing out, so they drug them with chemical compounds until they become unconscious. This is in Western Australian hospitals. Then they are putting an air tube into their nose to keep them alive. So they've, they've drugged them with chemical compounds so they've knocked out. They've forcibly got the police to take them from their home, drag them into a psychiatric unit, uh, drug them till they're unconscious, and then they um, keep them alive with a tube, and then they're transporting them to Greylands. Now you tell me, is that health practice? That is not health practice. That is very evil to do that to people. And it is, it is criminal. So they are doing things to people. And they get the police. They use the police to do it. It's all about force and control. And um, controlling people's lives. And then who knows how many people are dead. How many have they murdered in that hospital and other hospitals around the place? This is a very serious problem. We need to stop it. Their practice and we need to, it needs to be abolished. The current Act, 1996 Act, needs to be repealed and the practice of psychiatry needs to be stopped and it needs to be abolished because this has been going on for over 200 years.